Portrait Artist of the Year, Season 4, Episode 4. This is a good one, so let's get started. Okay, the first one up is Rachel Hunter. She's a supermodel, was once married to uh, uh, Rod Stewart. So I'm sure she has a, a, lot, a lot of stories to tell. So she's very accustomed to being observed and watched. After four hours, the artists turn their easels around and she gets to get, have her first look of what they've done. And she's gonna pick one of these to go home. So um, it looks somewhat promising, but let's see what the first one is. There's the first one, uh, pretty flat, pretty simple in terms of shape. And I'm going to stand by how stubborn I am about it needing to have a likeness. But let's pull back. Sometimes when we pull back, we get some more information. Um, not a whole lot of, of information here. Uh, for me, it's, it's just way too linear. You know, I, I don't see lines on people's faces. I see shapes, but I don't see lines. And I tend not to define things. Or I like painters that don't define things by line, but rather than a color, shape, value, shift which is just a different type of painting. All right, this is the second one up. This one looks, um, it has a lot of atmosphere to it. He, so he did a lot to the canvas to sort of distress it and make it look, um, oh, I don't know, I guess dark and moody would be my, my first look at it. The colors are pretty muddy and chalky, but, but it's clear that that's a conscious decision on his part. Does it look like her? Somewhat. I think it has a, a pretty good resemblance to her. Yeah, pretty, pretty good. Um, I enjoy the looseness of what he did around the face, and I, I like the contrast of how, how involved the face is, but almost wish he had been able to combine those two techniques together in some way. But I guess that's what he's doing. So good on him. All right, let's take a look at what the third one is. She's going to take one home which has nothing to do with the final judging. Here's the last one. Really, really beautiful softness to this painting. It's not uh, my style necessarily or something that I, I, I truly love because um, it's just all, all so very blended in. The other thing I have a problem with is uh, it looks like it might be her sister or her daughter. <laughs> I don't think it looks like her. So let's see which one she picks to go home with her. And I was surprised, but Rachel picked this one, and I thought, well, good on you. You know, you have a rock star kind of history that probably will fit in your home really, really well. So that's the first one, and you can see her giving the artist a nice hug, which was probably a thrill. <laughs> and here's one more close-up of that painting. It really is a good painting and really does have a resemblance to her. I, sh I shouldn't be so hard on these contestants, really. Um, if it had been me in this particular situation, this is one I would have picked to go home with me for sure. All right, our next model up is named Stephanie Martini. She is exquisitely beautiful, which right there is a challenge. Um, it's kind of the challenge when people try to paint uh, Princess Diana. There's just... No very seldom is someone able to capture that actual magic of what makes something someone beautiful, besides the fact that they're young and have symmetrical features and and correct, you know, even proportions and all that. But there's there's something more. I don't I don't know what that it factor is. Uh, she is a British actress, uh, best known I think for the reboot of Prime Suspect, which uh, unfortunately only had one season. So the artists are turning their easels around. And she's going to have her first look, and we'll pick one of these to go home. This one um, I can barely talk about because, for one thing, it does not look like her at all. It, and um, doesn't look like her at all. And I never understand the choices of including something like someone's eyelashes. You know, the, that's the kind of detail that I know they're there, but we... We, you do not see eyelashes from uh, several feet away. Uh, I'm not even sure what to say about this one either. It's certainly, I certainly like it better than the last one. I don't think it has a resemblance to her. That's the problem with these first two. There is no resemblance. They're good paintings. I'm not saying they're not good paintings, but this is a, a competition. There should be a resemblance. 
And now the next one. The next one, I fall down on my knees. I say, bless your heart. I think this one really looked like her. This is the kind of painter that I aspire to be. I love color value swap outs. I love lost and found edges. I love when an artist decides where they want you to look and put some important information there, but not so much information that you can't use your brain to also fill in some of the parts that aren't completely uh, outlined for you. And here's a close up. This is beautiful work. This is just beautiful, beautiful work. So Stephanie's pick, I thought it would be that one. Man, oh man, was I wrong. She picked this one. Well, at least once in these recaps, I get to say, I don't get it. I just don't get it. But, but that's her pick and she's happy with it. On to the next. The fourth model is Conleth Hill. I probably didn't pronounce that correctly. And he is, he is, what is he? Um, oh, he's an actor, of course, in Game of Thrones. If they're not in Game of Thrones and they're in Shakespeare or they're in um, Harry Potter movies, <laughs> all these people just recycle into those, those projects. Uh, four hours after he sits down, the artists turn their easels around and we get to see what they did. And this is a pretty strong group here, so I was happy for him. So here's the first one up. Definitely looks like him. Good job. A lot of blending, which I was not crazy about in one of the earlier paintings, but this does a much better job of providing a likeness. So uh, this, is, this is well done. And now what we found with some of these recaps is when we pull back, we sometimes get more information and impact than we do when we're up close. When you pull back, I, I don't think, know that it has the same impact that, that it did when we were close up. And remember, the winner is going to have a gallery commission in a major... National Gallery, and so their, their work has to be pretty darn strong. It's got to read across the room, which, you know, I, I, I think this, this probably will. Nicely done. The next one up is also has a very, very strong likeness to him, so very good job on that. I'm not a fan of chalky um, paint when, when, I, I, when people use a lot of, when color starts to get chalky. I don't know how else to say it. But I understand with oil painters especially, or acrylic painters, they use a lot of titanium white in order to get their value shifts, which is something that watercolor artists can't do. We have to mix paint to make those value shifts. So um, good job on that. And it's fun to see the two together, you know, the man looking at his own image. I think that's kind of funny. All right, here's the third one. This is a large piece, uh, beautifully done, I think, uh, done with some sort of... Um, crayon or pastel of some kind. So this is not done with a brush. But uh, it, I think it has a, a good likeness to him. So good on that. Yeah, when we pull back, you see that's starting to have the kind of impact that they're going to want for that final commission. But right now, this is about which one he's going to choose to take home with him. So let's see which one he chooses. And I, I, I would have been happy, if it had been me, I would have been happy with any of the three of these. I think this was a strong, strong group that he had painting him. So let's see what his pick is. And he does pick that big, big one. And uh, you could tell how happy he was to have it. So good for him. Now we're going to go on to the final judging. Now the final judging, they're going to pick three people from all the contestants. And there were nine contestants. Three people for this particular heat. So here are some of the contestants waiting to find out who the three are that are chosen for the semifinals. Only one of these people, as I said, will go on to the finals. Here's the first one, which had a very strong likeness. So I, I certainly agree with that. This is a time when I've, I've agreed with all the judges so far in this program, which was, I have to admit, kind of delightful. Um, the next one, which you already know is my absolute favorite, and I, I do think it has such a strong likeness to her and is, and is a real artistic interpretation. Not literal, but definitely done by a colorist who knows how to insert color for value impeccably. Beautifully done. And the next one, which was that large painting. Uh, I shouldn't say pa painting, drawing. So, which also had a strong resemblance. And you know that in past episodes, we, we've had some, some uh, finalists with... with 
with no resemblance to the models at all. So now what they're doing currently is they're showing you the submitted painting, which is the one on the left. In order to get in the program, you need to send a digital self-portrait. So here's the self-portrait, which had no time limits on it, compared to the painting that she did today, which had four hours. There's such strong consistency between the two pieces. It looks like she can handle that final commission very, very well. So that it, that's that's really very beautifully done, and I really appreciate that they're letting us see these two pieces of work together. It gives you a better sense of the body of work of the artist. Now the next one, I've already revealed my hand. This is my favorite. Oh my God. Oh, it looked exactly like, oh, exactly like the painter as well. And I have to admit, I'm a little jelly. Yeah, I get a little jelly when I see some really great painting. I know I shouldn't, but I can't help it. It's just sort of something like I, I look and I go, that's what I want to do. That's what I want to be able to do. And on a good day, sometimes I'm able to get pretty darn close to this, but, uh, but not on any kind of consistent basis, for sure. Anyway, this is not about me. I think those are two strong paintings. And let's go on to the next one. This one's kind of fun, and that she did a, a, her self-portrait of herself full on like that. And I think she wrote, I think it says mug on it, you know, like a mug shot. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. So I enjoy the humor of that. Uh, it does look like the one on the left where she had more time was had was more studied, of course, than the one that she did today. But she's perfectly capable of doing the final commission. So I didn't know which one they would pick in this case. And I thought, well, any one they pick is fine with me. But I'd love it if they picked my favorite. So let's see what happens. This is the final judging. This must be so nerve-wracking. Here are the three finalists waiting to find out who's going to go on. And uh, we don't know. So let's, and, and they pause for quite a while for dramatic effect while you're waiting. The winner is, well, the winner is my favorite. Yay. Ah, oh, I just could fall into this painting so easily. I could look at it endlessly. It makes me want to sit down and paint. It certainly makes me want to get out my turquoise tubes, which I almost never get to use because you don't find turquoise in nature hardly ever. Um, and some, certainly some rose as well. Oh gosh, it's so well done. And there she is getting her congratulations and well-deserved. And that's her, her mother in the red that's there as well. So happy days for all. Here's a close up so you can see how she created forms out of just those value color shifts. You know, it looks so simple to do and it's so hard to do, so hard to simplify, but you understand what I'm saying? No eyelashes. Yeah. But if you're that kind of painter that puts all the eyelashes in, I say, great, go for it. Just make sure that there is a likeness to the subject. So remember to keep the white to your paper white, your paint wet, mass for value mix for, for, what did I say? <laughs> remember to keep the white to your paper white, your paint wet, mass for value, mix for color. Man, I forgot my tagline. And please join my YouTube channel and I'll see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.